like to show you uh, an example of GMM uh, and a place where it's turned out to be useful. Let's apply GMM to ordinary least squares, to uh, the distribution theory you've known all along about how to run regressions. And we'll both see GMM in action, and you'll derive some very useful formulas. So let us think of a regression, y equals x times beta plus epsilon, the standard uh, OLS regression. x here is a vector. Uh, for example, here I have two x variables and one constant. Uh, which would be a standard uh, regression with two right-hand variables. So that's the size of the X matrix. That's why it's XT prime beta, and beta is a three by one uh, vector. So we want to estimate that. Let's map it into GMM. We have to find a function of the parameters that is supposed to be zero, uh, a GT. The GT was the function of parameters that should be zero. Well, OLS is defined by the right-hand variable X is orthogonal to the error term, y minus x beta. So error terms are orthogonal to right-hand variables. Let's, make the, let's use that as our moment defining the parameter beta that we want to estimate. So there's gt of beta, et of y minus x beta equals 0. Now, in this case, we have the same number of moments as we have parameters. There's three betas and three moments. The three x's are each orthogonal to the error term. So the A matrix is just going to be the identity matrix. It's going to be exactly identified. There won't be any testing to do, but that's fine. We can still use GMM to define our estimate and define the distribution theory of our estimate, and that's why we're here. So there's our, this is our A, just identity matrix, times GT equals 0. Solve that for beta. This one, we don't have to do any computer searches. Solve that equation for beta hat. Beta hat is E of XX prime inverse E of XY. Now there you're going, wait a minute, what is this? I've never seen that, but the uh, GMM notation, ET of XX prime inverse, that's the same thing as our usual X prime X matrix. The X matrix that we write in the usual case is X1 prime, X2 prime, and so forth. So that notation is the same thing as that notation. So that is our friend, the X prime X matrix and the X prime Y matrix. You knew that, but here we are. What we're doing is mapping it into GMM so we can use the GMM distribution theory. The D matrix is the derivative of that with respect to the parameter. The derivative of that with respect to the parameter is just E of XX prime. The A matrix is the identity matrix because there's no over identifying restrictions. The function of data, the U thing, is just that thing in there. It is X times the error term. So there's our U object right there. Our S matrix then is the, uh, the long run covariance matrix of the U's, E of U, U prime, or bringing it back to originals, the sum of E of epsilon T, X T, X T minus J, epsilon T minus J prime. Now we've got all our ingredients, the S, the F, the D, the G, all of these uh, GMM notations that confuse you the first time around. So the standard error of the OLS regression coefficient is just D inverse S, D inverse prime. The A's are again with the identity matrix. Or putting the ingredients together, there's our D, there's our S, there's our D prime. What, you say? Wait a minute. Where did my friend X prime X inverse go? That doesn't look like something I learned before. Yes, it is. This is a generalized version of the formulas you've seen before. Suppose that the errors are uncorrelated over time. That's the usual ordinary least squares assumption. If the errors are uncorrelated over time, then there's no lag terms here. The epsilon t times epsilon t minus j, those all go. So we get rid of the lags. Secondly, suppose that the errors are uh, homoscedastic. They have constant variance. That's the other usual OLS assumption. If the errors are homoscedastic, then the remaining term, e of epsilon xx prime, is the same thing as e of epsilon squared times xx prime sigma squared epsilon e of xx prime. So what do we have left after all that? Well, we have the e of xx prime. We have a sigma squared epsilon e of xx prime and one more e of xx prime inverse. One of those cancels with one of those, and you get your old friend e of xx prime inverse sigma squared epsilon, which you've seen before. But you don't have to do that anymore. This, in fact, gives you a useful formula. Suppose you don't think the epsilons are homoscedastic. Sometimes uh, the epsilons have higher variance than at other times. Now we have a formula 
white standard errors that correct OLS for potentially conditionally heteroscedastic error terms. What if the error terms are not, auto, are not uh, um, independent over time? What if they're autocorrelated over time? That happens a lot. Well, now we get to use this formula. Those are called hanson hodrick or Newey West standard errors. This is a formula for the standard errors of the OLS regression coefficient that corrects for arbitrary autocorrelation of the errors over time, as well as arbitrary heteroscedasticity. Um, the, usually, the way we estimate these, we don't do sums from j equals minus infinity to infinity. You do a finite sum, and you weight them uh, so that the tail ones don't, don't cause problems for you. Don't, they're, they're, they're a little too noisy. Or you do something parametric, as I suggested on the very first um, uh, case today, uh, model them by an autocorrelation coefficient. But you have a formula now for OLS that um, corrects for all the problems that we, for many of the problems that we run into. And it's a very simple derivation once you know GMM. These things were hard the first time around. Now they're easy. Um.